Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth video in our series of videos on the plant agents. As always we begin with our learning outcomes so by the end of this presentation you guys should know what led to the Munster plantation taking place. You guys should know three facts about how the Munster plantation was organised and finally you guys should know three reasons why the Munster plantation was not a success. We saw in our last video how Queen Mary I adopted a new policy known as Plantation and Leash and Offaly to try to extend English control west of the Pale. Mary's reign as Queen was short as she died in 1558. She was succeeded by her sister Queen Elizabeth I, a daughter from Henry VIII's second marriage to Anne Boleyn who unfortunately had her head chopped off by Henry after being accused of witchcraft among many other things. Elizabeth immediately reversed Mary's religious policy and re-established Protestantism as the official religion of England. She once again made the ruler of England the supreme governor or head of the Church of England and Ireland. As far as her policy towards Ireland, Elizabeth met many of the same problems that her sister, her brother and her father had met, mainly that insubordinate Irish lords resented and kicked against royal authority. In her early attempts to bring Ireland firmly under English control, she focused on subjugating Ulster, which would have been known as the most Gaelic part of Ireland. Here she clashed with Shane O'Neill, who was sometimes known as Shane the Proud, and she attempted to plant Ulster, but the attempts turned out to be a complete failure, and Elizabeth's tensions were turned to the south of the country and the Gaelicised Anglo-Normans. So in the south of the country, the Earl of Desmond, Gerald Fitzgerald, who had large tracts of lands around Cork, Limerick, Kerry, Tipperary and Waterford, was once again at war with the Earl of Ormond, Thomas Butler, and he had his land sent around Kilkenny. And this was all taking place in the year 1565. Both were summoned to England and fined for waging war in Elizabeth's realm and promised not to do so again. The Earl of Ormond uh, ended up being true to his word, but the Earl of Desmond didn't like Elizabeth interfered in his affair affairs. And he also was unhappy at the re-establishment of the Protestant church. His consistent insubordination led to his arrest in 1567. In protest, his family launched a rebellion led by James Fitzmaurice Fitzgerald against the Queen and they attacked Kilkenny, which would have been where Ormond's power was centred. This rebellion is known as the Geraldine Rebellion or the Desmond Rebellion. However, the Fitzgeralds were crushed within a few weeks with the English forces taking 23 of Desmond's castles and slaughtering everyone inside of them. The rebellion lingered on for a few years but was eventually ended in 1573. It was in 1573 also that the Earl of Desmond himself, Gerald Fitzgerald, was released from the imprisonment but again he remained completely defiant. The Fitzgeralds of Desmond sent representatives to Europe to try to find help to fight the Protestant Queen of England. And in 1579, Pope Gregory XIII sent 600 troops who landed at Smerwick Harbour in County Kerry. And they built a fort there known as Dunanor or the Fort of Gold. The Pope wanted to ensure that Ireland remained Catholic. The rest of Munster rose in rebellion upon the arrival of these troops. However, the fort itself was surrounded by English troops who heard of the coming of the Pope's forces and they were led by the Queen's representative, the Lord Deputy, a man named Arthur Grey. They massacred everybody in the fort. Soon the Earl of Desmond and the leading Fitzgeralds were tracked down and killed, with the Earl's severed head being sent to the Queen. The second Desmond or Geraldine Rebellion was over in 1583. After more than three years of brutal, merciless warfare, the land of Munster was completely left in ruins and a famine swept across the area. It's estimated that about 30,000 people had been killed in the fighting of the Desmond Rebellion. The land was almost empty 
And under the conditions of surrender and regret, which we met under King Henry VIII, the Fitzgerald's lands were now forfeited to the crown. So this seemed to be the perfect condition to plant the lands of Munter, Munster with loyal subjects. There was a quick survey done of the land and nearly a quarter of a million acres of good land and a quarter of a million acres of poor land were identified and divided up into 35 settlements. Elizabeth encouraged English planters known as undertakers who were given estates ranging from 4,000 acres to 12,000 acres so long as they promised to undertake Elizabeth's conditions. They were required first of all to bring over English tenants and staff to work on their estates. They were to introduce English methods of agriculture and to remove all Irish from the land. Sir Walter Raleigh, an English explorer, got a massive estate of 42,000 acres in Yall of Cork. He was one of many men known as adventurers who were given these gigantic estates in Munster. The undertakers also promised to defend Ireland from any Spanish invasion. In 1588, King Philip II of Spain, the husband of Queen Elizabeth's dead sister Mary, um, launched a massive Spanish fleet of 130 ships to invade England. This fleet of ships is known to history as the Spanish Armada, and Philip II aimed to overthrow Queen Elizabeth and her Protestant church and to stop England from interfering in Spanish territory including piracy in the New World. However, many of the ships were wrecked off the coast of Ireland and Scotland, with the invasion being a total failure. Some of the Spanish soldiers ended up shipwrecked in Ireland, and they recorded their adventures in trying to get back home, which is a valuable source for us of information on what life was like in Ireland at the time. While the Munster plantation was more successful than the Leash and Offaly plantation, it was still not particularly successful. There were new towns like Bandon and Killarney which were founded, but the plantation itself was not a massive success. The reason for this was that the country in Munster was desolate. It was destroyed and it required a lot of labour to make it profitable. Only 4,000 English settlers arrived after um, the plantation had happened and they had expected at least 20,000 so the settlers had to rent out the land to the Gaelic Irish completely undermining the old, the undertaking that they took to remove the Gaelic Irish from the land. The second reason was many of the undertakers left and returned to England and these were known as absentee landlords uh, as they were absent from the land and the final reason was the estates were also too big for the undertakers to defend, so they were vulnerable to attacks from the Gaelic Irish who were trying to reclaim their land. However, the English would learn from these two plantations, and when the powerful Gaelic lords in Ulster rebel, it gives the English the opportunity to take the lessons they learned and to try to colonise the wildest part of Ireland, Ulster. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. So by now you guys should know what led to the Munster Plantation taking place. Second, you guys should know three facts about how the Munster Plantation was organized. And finally, you guys should know three reasons why the Munster Plantation wasn't a success. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys got something good from this video.